fun thing that you can learn to do with your blues, first of all, is play it on an acoustic guitar, and second of all, is learn how to embellish using the scales that you already know uh, within your playing. So let's say, for instance, we're gonna play blues in the key of G. So we're gonna be using G major, C major, and D major. Okay? But instead of just playing G major and C major and D major, we're going to turn those into seventh chords. Okay, so I'm going to take my G, uh, take my pinky off, and I got myself a G7 chord. I can go down to the uh, C chord here and play the A7 shape. Right? So I've got my first finger barring over everybody, the bottom five there. Got my third finger on the fourth string, fifth fret, and I got my pinky on the second string, fifth fret. And then I could take D and play the same thing, D7, okay? So that's the first step. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do two things with this. We're gonna convert some of these chords into something a little more interesting, and we're going to embellish along those chords as well. Just have some fun with this, right? So the first thing we're gonna do here is let's just take this G chord, we're gonna build our chord. So we have G7. Okay. Now again, you can strum the whole time, you can lift your fingers to create some space. Okay. I like to use the kick and, or kick and snare ideas that I teach often where you kind of separate the thicker strings from the thinner strings. Okay, so that idea over the G7. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the C7, but instead of actually playing it as C7, what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert that into a C9 chord to make it sound a little bit more interesting, a little bit more colorful, okay? So right here what we've got is my middle finger is gonna be on the third fret of the fifth string. My first finger is going to be on the second fret of the fourth string. My third finger is going to be on the uh, third fret of the third string. And my pinky is gonna go on the third fret of the second string. And I just wanna strum those four strings. So I'm gonna deaden out this string with my first finger. I'm gonna kinda touch it so it dies there. And I'm deadening out the sixth string with the tip of my middle finger there. And it just adds some spice into the chord that I'm playing. Okay, so I have G7. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to my G7. Okay, now here comes the 5 chord. Now I've got a D7 that I can play, which is fine. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to play my D chord like this. And it's going to be a D7, but it's going to sound a little bit different. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm putting my third finger on the fifth fret of the fifth string. I'm putting my ring finger on the fourth fret of the fourth string. I'm putting my pinky on the fifth fret of the third string. And then I'm putting my first finger on the third fret of the second string. Okay, so I'm just creating a chord here using a seventh in there. But again, it doesn't sound so high up there, it kind of stays within the context of the tonality of my other two chords. So I'm deadening out this first string here with the, the index finger, and I'm deadening out the sixth string with the tip of my ring finger like I normally do. Okay, so here's what we got so far. Follow along, play along with me if you're ready. You know, you can watch this video as much as you need to, but let's have some fun with this blues, okay? So here we go. One, two, one, two, ready, and... Here comes our four chords, so we're gonna go to that C9. Back to the G. Okay, now, we gotta get to that five chord. We're going to that D7 there. Then we're gonna go back to the four chord. Then back to the one chord. Okay, now at most blues, you're going to turn around at the very end and you're going to head back to the five chord to kind of wrap things up. Now, instead of going back to this D7 shape like this, as my last chord, which would work perfectly fine, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a D sharp nine chord. Okay, just to change up the tonality again to make it a little more interesting. So now what I'm doing is the same shape that I did on the C9. Right here, I'm moving up to D, but I'm going to take my pinky and kick it out one fret. 
again, deadening the first string, deadening the sixth string. So that's what I'm going to go to at the very end, the, the very end of the turnaround of this song or this blues, okay? So I'm just going to tag that. So I want you to watch this very carefully and then we're going to play together, okay? So I've got G7. Tempo doesn't matter. You can play it anywhere. Okay, here comes that C9. Back to G7. Now D7 right here. C9. Seven, then right there I'm going to that D with the sharp nine right here. Again, I wouldn't have to, it just sounds kind of cool to me. Okay, <clears throat> so step number one is let's learn how to play that 12 bar blues progression together with those chord shapes. Okay, and again, you can pause this anytime you need to to practice this. And then step two, we're going to embellish it a little bit, and then step three, we're going to start adding in some notes. Okay, so step one. Play this together. This is your goal, okay, is to be able to play this 12 bar blues right here, okay? If you need to slow it down, it's perfectly fine. I'll slow it down a little bit as well so we can play along together. Here we go. One, two, ready, and. Okay, here comes that C9, so here I go. Back to the G7. Okay, here comes that G7 right here. To the C9, to the G7, then up to the D9, to sharp 9. Play along with me. Let's have some fun with this. Here we go. Back to the G7. So that's step number one, is develop that. And even if you only did that, it's going to sound a lot more fun than just playing open chords or seventh chords or something like that, because there's some tonal color going on in there, right? Your chords are changing color a little bit, which makes it sound a little more interesting, okay? Now, let's start doing some really simple things like adding in some chordal chromatics, okay? Now, let me show you what I mean. I'm going to play the same thing again, only this time what I'm going to do is just add in some subtle chromatic movements, and they don't always have to be chromatic. Uh, chromatic just means half steps, right? So that's how I'm using it anyway. So here we go. So I have this. Now watch this. See how I just dropped back one fret? Okay. And there's no rhyme or reason to this. It doesn't have to be in any particular place, although I am going to start using them so you can learn from, but you can add these in anywhere you want. So here we go. So that's how you could add that into the, the one chord. Now, the four chord could do the same thing. Watch this. So you see, I can move. What I'm doing right now is I'm just sliding a half step up or a half step down even. That sounds cool too. Okay. Now, again, it's going to depend on the, the two things I'm going to be thinking about here is number one, I don't want to do this all the time on every chord in the same place. Right. And number two, I want to make sure that it doesn't get way too busy. Okay. So if I'm doing it a lot, like on everything, you know, it might get to be too much, but it, it's, it's entirely up to you. So let me add some of that in a little bit and kind of show you what I'm doing. So one, two, three, four. See that? Now I went. Okay, now we could use all kinds of stuff like this. So again, bear with me here. I'm just giving you some ideas. So I've got two new ideas here. I've got my half step one, right? Now here's another one. And again, it doesn't matter where I add it in. See, 
see how many different ways I can use this. Literally anywhere rhythmically. There's no right or wrong place to put this. It's where it feels most comfortable for you. Okay, then you got your C9 chord here. Now you don't have as much room to work with here. If we were in a different key, you'd have more space to move. Because I'm in, uh, in C, you know, I'm not gonna go like this off the guitar and then try and work this. I'm just gonna use the half step. But I could use the one above it too, right? So I have, now, listen to how cool this sounds now. Now again, that might be a little much, but I'm just showing you how it works. Now here comes the five chord. Now because I don't have a lot of time in there, I'm not going to do some slides there just because I'm moving pretty quick. I certainly could, you know, I could. See, I went from the five, back a half step, then to the C9 like that. Or I could have done this, I could have stayed on five and just kept that shape and moved down. Because I don't have to go to a C9, I could go to the C7 like this too. Pretty cool, huh? So I could go. Okay, here it comes. Okay, so already you'll notice with the, the combination of changing my chords, Needless to say, using some rhythm in there, right? Not just using the same pattern over and over and over. And using this sliding technique, and it's gonna take a little bit, like when I'm playing for you right now, I don't have any one particular place I'm sliding. I'm just adding it in as an embellishment, and that's what I want you to understand, okay? You don't have to feel like you have to slide every time on every chord in every position and do downs and ups and you know slide up and slide down. and You don't have to do all of that, okay? The trick is to try and sell, you know, uh, the, the blues element with some fun in between to make it sound interesting to your listener. So your listener listens and goes, oh yeah, it's way more interesting than just going. You know what I mean? So you're just adding some subtlety in there. You're adding some rhythm and you're adding some half step or more. So it's pretty cool. Now a really traditional thing to add at the end is this, that little tag. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm going from my C9 up to my E9. Now again, I can kick that pinky out if I have time. If I don't, I can just leave it as a D9, but it's a chromatic run from your four to your five. So you're coming off the, the very end of your blues, you're going, sorry. Right here. So you could do it either way. You could do it as a sharp nine. Or kick your pinky out at the end. Okay? The thing I need you to understand about this is when it comes to real authentic creation of music, certainly in the blues genre, it's not about exactness. It's not about that, you know, you have to use the sharp nine or you can't use it here, but you can use it here. It's all about tonality. Now, if I was sitting on this four chord, I like the sound of the ninth chord more sitting on the four chord. Instead of, sounds a little bit aggressive to me. So I like just the sound of the, the, the ninth. But at the end, the chord is just a passing chord to get me to the E sharp nine or the D sharp nine, excuse me. So it's okay that it's a sharp nine right there because I'm, I'm, I'm not accenting that chord anyway. It's just used as kind of a passing chord to get me up here or vice versa. If I use it as just a nine and I'm just using the ninth instead of the sharp nine, that's okay too. It's a difference in color. So you can see how all of a sudden when you start thinking about playing like this, 
And again, you have forever to learn how to do this. You don't have to learn this in a day or two days or do exactly what I'm doing. The goal is, is to just start by thinking step one is I have a 12 bar blues. Step two is I'm playing them as bar chords, right? Step three, I'm turning them into seventh chords. Step four, I'm looking for options other than seventh chords. I can play this as a ninth, or I can play the D as a seventh like this, or I can play the C as a seventh like this. There's a lot of different things that you can do. So you could start with my idea and then embellish on your own. Okay, next step, we start adding in some half step or more slide movements because it just makes it sound a little bit more interesting. We don't have to do it all the time. We don't have to overdo it, but it sounds pretty darn cool. Okay, um, now the next step is, is that you can start utilizing notes of your G minor pentatonic scale and your G major pentatonic scale. And let me just show you again, just a little bit of this. So if I have G minor pentatonic, what I'm really concerned with is this, this, and this. Those are the ones I'm really looking for. Especially this and this, those two guys. Okay, if I was playing major pentatonic, I would get this note, okay, which we already have, okay, it's right there, and then this note and this note. So we have those two fives right there, and we have these two sixes in the minor side. Those are major, and these are minor. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these two fives and these two sixes to embellish in our chord. Now you could use those any way you want to. Okay, any way you want to. You can use them a little, you can use them a lot, you can use them in any order. See, the G really has a lot of a lot of space to get creative with those those four notes right there. I wouldn't I wouldn't try and do all that. Just add it in once in a while. You know, don't overdo it like that. Just kind of throw it in once in a while. Now, when I go to this chord, I'm not going to do all that because my fingers are already full. So that's maybe where I use a little more slidey ideas, right? And then I go back. Now here, my, my fingers are full. But I could have some fun with the sliding. Now here's that. Okay, so over that G, it's really awesome to be able to add in these two sixes or these two fives. Of course, we're in G. We could do this anywhere, but okay. And another one that you can add in that's pretty darn cool, but it's a little bit harder to do is to take your middle finger off the guitar and do a hammer on from the three to the four there. So you could be going. but it sounds so bluesy and it sounds so freaking cool to go. Okay, so that's another really neat idea that you can add into this as well, is just throwing that in there, that little hammer on over your chord. So again, what's nice about this is you don't have to get all perfect on trying to hit the right like pick all the strings in between, you can just kind of strum and add and remove those. Now it's gonna take a little time to get comfortable with it. And again, that's what this journey is all about. It's not replicating somebody's playing exactly, it's the premise, the idea, okay? And again, I'm gonna encourage you to practice this and I'm gonna encourage you to try and post a video on, for instance, the Facebook community page to, um, if you're not already familiar, go to Facebook, look up Guitar Zoom uh, community, and post a video of you practicing this. This is a great idea, okay? It's a lot of really fun stuff that you can do with this thing. So don't worry like you gotta overdo it or anything like that. Just explore these ideas and see what you can come up with.